There we go. So those are our rockets, uh, rocket turrets going off on him. And um, let's go ahead and start blowing him up. So we want to, let's see if we can target his, can I see, no, I can't see in first person at all, so we're just going to get a little closer. But we're, we're kicking the shit out of this guy, as you can see. <laughs> I mean, he's just, if you look at the bar on the right hand side, uh, down below, that's my shield and we're at 88% shield. So, I mean, he doesn't have a prayer. He just does not have a prayer. I want to, I do want to try and target his guns, but yeah, he's he's having a hard time, isn't he? We got a couple of uh oh, the defense station is shooting at us. I thought our shields were going down a little quicker than they should be. Um so let's back up so that so we're not getting hit by the defense station at least. So, my turrets have pretty much taken out his guns for the most part. And what they should be doing now is they should start to focus on his thrusters, because if we take out his thrusters, then we basically render him immobile. Oh, uh, he does have some turrets down on the bottom here, too, so doesn't he? So... That was a little late. Okay, let's bring out our plasmas. You can hear these, you know, when you're inside the vessel. Um, but when you're in third person, because we're so far out, you know, you can't quite hear them as well. Let's get our rockets out again. Okay, I think we've taken out his thrusters because he's he's not moving. Okay, let's reload our rockets here. And yeah, we uh we took this guy out of the out of the running. He is completely wasted. There are a couple more turrets actually on top of him there. Um, but I think, you know what I think we did? I think we blew out his power, so he doesn't have any power left. Which is also another way you can <laughs> immobilize him, of course. Um, here, let's get back up here. There, that's the view I wanted to see. So yeah, he still has a couple guns on top there. Not anymore. Okay. There we go. Um, I wonder if we should or could try and actually board this ship just for the hell of it. Just for the fun of it. Uh, the only thing I'd want to be careful of is if any... Um, space drones come by. Of course, our turrets on our capital vessels should take care of them. Here's what we could do. Let's get, let's kind of get underneath it here. Okay, and then we're going to we're going to hop out, and we've got a drone port right here. So let's just take a look at this thing in our drone. Oh, he still has a gun there, but it's not active because he lost his power. So I've never actually been boarded this ship before or been on it, so I don't know if it has uh, stuff to loot or not. 
Sometimes these AI ships don't really have a whole... Uh, they don't have as much on them as they should because they can be really hard to take out. I mean, this was no contest, of course, in this particular case. But, oh, yeah, there's a loot crate right there. Um, can we do this? No. We, we'll have to... We, didn't, we either have to take out its core or we have to board it in person to loot that. Um... I don't see any enemies on here at all. We wouldn't have to worry about turrets because there's no power. Um, that doesn't mean, though, you know, because the core is still active, that doesn't mean it couldn't spawn enemies on us. Okay, well, I'll tell you what. Let's do a little bit of a spacewalk. But before we do that, uh, I want to make sure I've got my heavy armor back on. But we're also going to need, probably going to need to use the EVA boost because it's minus 167 outside. So let's do this. Let's go into our uh, tutorial SV, our small vessel. And this is the armor that's got all of our stuff on it. Um, what? Okay, just drop it then. Oh, wait, no, what the hell am I doing? Hold on, hold on. Put that there. Oh, for Pete's sake. I can't, I'm, I'm so heavy, I can't pick it up. Uh, all right, let's just connect to the small vessel. There, now we can pick it up. Okay, so this will protect us down to <laughs> only 3.2 Fahrenheit. Yeah, we're, we're going to have to put the EVA boost on for sure. So, uh, what's the outside radiation? It's 3.8. And I think this suit protects us up to 6. So, we don't need the rad boost. Uh, let's take that off. And we need the EVA boost off of our other armor, though. So, can we put that in here now? Yeah. Stick this over here for a second, put this on, pull that off, put this over here, put this here, and put the EVA boost on. You can see right now we're only protected up to 3.2 Fahrenheit. Now we're protected to minus 338 <laughs> because it is cold in space. It is very cold in space. Yes, it is. Okay. Um, let's disconnect from the wireless for now. And we still have our weapons and our ammo in here, so we're good to go. Uh, let's do another squirt to make sure there's nothing really nasty coming by. And why are our shields off? I must have accidentally hit the... Which is, there, there's a key that you accidentally hit in this game, and it turns your shields off, and it's irritating as all get out, and can be dangerous as all get out, too. Anyway, um, okay, so I don't see any enemies nearby that would be coming towards us. So let's go ahead and... Put our jetpack on and head out. Do a little bit of a spacewalk ourselves. Oh, we must have been. Oh, yeah, we were right by the thruster. That's why we were roasting there. Okay, we could have enemies spawn on here. We probably won't, but we could. There's the bathroom. Living quarters. Oh! We do have enemies. Oh, shit. <laughs> uh, we do have enemies. Okay. We have gravity, too, so... Gravity's a good thing. Here, let's get this out. I wondered if they were going to spawn enemies. Oh shit, that's a lot of enemies. <laughs> that's a hell of a lot of enemies. 
Wait, what's in here? Oh, nice. Rifle upgrade kit. Okay. Let's close that door for a second. Oh, shit. That's a little too close. This is shotgun work here. Come here, dude. Stick your head around the corner. Come on, dog. Okay. These guys in the yellow suits are Xerax commanders, and they, uh, they're they pretty damn tough. They're absolutely deadly on, on the hard settings. Um, but he's also only a level one, too, so that also makes a difference in terms of how tough they can be. There is a lot of crew on this ship, way more than I was expecting. Okay, let's bring our rocket launcher back out. That's a mech. Yeah, you just stick your face right out there, pal. There's the core right there. It's inside of that enclosure. One of those little robot things. Machine gun robots. I mean, I don't really need to loot these guys. <laughs> I would if, if we were doing this legit, of course I would, but... Doesn't really matter for here. Okay, so that's the core. Um, can we... Do I have any explosives on me? I have some here. We get to it from down here. Sometimes you can blow the core just through a block that it's on. Let's just try that and see what happens. There we go. All right. Now the ship is ours. That must... Yeah, that goes out into space. Okay. This is really cool. Yeah, like I said, I've never actually been on this vessel before. Oh, we lost gravity. <laughs> okay, we got to put our jetpack back on. So, yeah, that's the one thing about being in space. Um, is you need the jetpack to actually move if there's no gravity. Oh, there's a loot crate right there. Okay, cool. I'm not going to really take that stuff, but it's, it's good to know, though, that there are, in fact, loot crates on this vessel because, um, you know, some planets will have a planetary patrol vessel, which is an enemy Xerax vessel that will kind of harass you until you eventually are able to take it down. But there's, there's like, nothing on it. It's just, it's a super big disappointment. This is the galley. The nice view, viewing port there. So, you know, it's good to know that this ship is worthwhile, you know, to take down because you're actually going to find some loot on here. This is probably the bridge or what's left of it after our capital vessel just pounded the shit out of it. Oh, no, that's not the bridge. That that's that went that way. Okay, this is this is the bridge up here, isn't it? No, actually, you know what? I think this is the the stern of the ship. Is it or not? Well, I I think it is the bridge, but it's just in the back of the ship. I think that's what it is cuz that is a that is a pilot seat right there. Cuz the ship flies this way, so it's like a hammerhead kind of thing. Cool. All right, guys. Well, there you go. Now you know. Now you know that you can take out this Corvette as long as you have a capable capital vessel of your own. And the black light is <laughs> it was definitely like a little OP for this. I mean, there was no contest, but it was still fun nonetheless and it feels good you know to take that guy out cuz he was he was picking on us earlier. So we brought Big Brother up to take care of him, right? All right. So, let's um 
Let's do a quick tour of the ship and then we're gonna we're gonna go to another star system. So this is the bridge as you can see. And um yee, I don't want to put that on. And I actually have several cockpits. All of these are actually cockpits that you could sit in. Uh, I chose them not because I wanted multiple cockpits, but because I liked the look of them, um, you know, uh, on the bridge here. So they're kind of like different stations. Like you could think of this as a navigation station, and this could be like a weapon station or whatever. Um, yeah, and so this is basically the bridge. And as you can see, we do have a drone port that we can uh, get outside with a drone or in person if we need to, like we just did. Uh, this is the commons area, so this is where people can, you know, when they're off duty, can sit down and watch the football game or whatever. And then this area here goes down to the mess hall. And, oh, we actually have, we have, is her name Susan or Marie? I can't, oh, I think her name's Marie. <laughs> so she's one of the NPCs that you could actually spawn in. And uh, apparently she is saved with the ship so yeah okay so yeah this is basically my my mess hall so i've got a fridge for input a fridge for output and then this is a medical fridge and a couple of different food processors there uh we got tons of crop plots in here um you can grow uh enough food to 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 provide the vessel with plenty of rations and plenty of medical supplies uh with the garden and then you know that goes back to the engineering section but let's actually go back up here for a minute and um, if we go down the hallway here, you know what, too? I think I'm going to turn the lights off just to kind of get rid of the, 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 blue, the blue effect for now. So this is the captain's quarters with a nice um, porthole to view out and see the, the planet off in the distance. This is the first officer's quarters. It's really kind of just the same thing. Um, these are the crew quarters here on both sides. And then if you come over here, this is the 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 women's uh the women's head, lavatory, whatever, and this is the men's on this side. There's no doors on either one of them because I didn't have room to fit one. <laughs> so yeah, doorless bathroom. Uh this is the medical bay. And so in here we've got an O2 station, a medical station, and then all four of the different types of stations that you need uh for removing any ailment in the game. And then we also have some extra um uh, O2 tanks in here. I don't know why that's empty. I thought I had something there, but maybe not. And then this kind of looks out over the engineering section. And, uh, you know, that's where the generator is and the f and some of the fuel tanks. We got, this is our warp drive down here, this red thing. And we have, um, this is our gravity generator. Uh, inside of here, I used to have some RCSs, uh, but I don't, uh, with the new aerodynamics and whatnot, um, they're not needed anymore. And they took up a shitload of CPU, so I just pulled them out. I haven't really done anything else with this yet, but I'll probably change that up at some point. This is our warp uh, fuel tank right there. Uh, but there is a lot of radiation going on down here, so... I mean, I don't know if... I might try and fix that someday, or I might not. Um, if I don't, then... If you ever bring this ship in, just don't stand here for a long time. How's that? Uh, this is the mid-deck. Uh, we've already seen this a little bit. And if you... Uh, like I said, I have a, a spare... Uh, cockpit here so we can quickly jump out of our ship and then you know move the vessel without having to go all the way back up to the bridge um, and then let's see so if we go back here I have uh, engine rooms on uh, in both of the wings okay so they're both pretty much mirrors of one another let's turn the lights back on for a second so you get the full effect here um, so these are like the, you know, the actual thrusters. So we're inside of the wing of the capital vessel right now. And you can go all the way up in here and back up in here. And you can see and, and access all the thrusters and repair them and work on them if you need to. This is all role playing stuff too, by the way, you guys, just for the heck of it. It is warm in here though. So, um, yeah, maybe it's cause you're right next to the thrusters. So let's get out of here before we collapse from heat stroke. <sighs> So yeah, this is the starboard uh, side engine room, and the <laughs> we are going to collapse from heat stroke. Goodness gracious! Um, and the port side is just really a mirror of that. It's exactly the same, um, but on the port side. Okay. Uh, so, and then this is a big old bay door here. We'll go outside where we can cool off. And um, so here's here's the thing that's a little bit weird about Imperion. If you don't have your uh, your jetpack on in space, you fall. 
How does that work? Because there's no gravity in space. <laughs> but it's the way the game works. So it'll actually force you to fall down, I guess, if you don't have your jetpack on. Um, so, yeah, just kind of funny. Anyway, um, this is the... Oh, we're upside down, too. Look at that. Uh, so this is the lower deck. We've already we already kind of saw this, you know, before where the hover vessel and everything is parked. Uh, we've got lots of storage in here. We've got different constructors that are color coded for specific things. Like this is for ammo. This is for fuel and O2. This is for ore processing, and this is general processing. Uh, this is our shield generator here. It's upside down because um, Elion introduced the shield generators after I built this ship. And I just, you know, so I never built the ship originally to house one of these. So I had no other place to put it. So I just stuck it there, but it works there. Um, there's also a front uh, access bay too. Um, so you can, if you happen to just be coming from the front of the ship with your hover vessel, you can also uh, board, you know, from the front if you want to. And then let's see, these two elevators just go back up to the mid deck here uh, where we were before and then um, this is uh, the offline protection thingamadoodle so if I logged out on a server um, this will basically make my ship in uh, invincible so nobody can blow it up while I'm offline kind of thing um, and then if we go up this elevator we come back up to the upper deck where we parked our small vessel earlier and it's got um, a repair station an armor station, we got O2, we've got uh, medic station, and this is actually uh, the control console for the, the repair bay, which is mounted out on the end of here. Right here. So if our ship gets damaged, um, you know, our small vessel or whatever, we just park it over the top of the this little repair bay and then we can turn it on from the console, feed in whatever resources it requires, and then they will automatically repair our ship um, to template. Okay. Uh, so if we look at that right now, um, it tells us the repair bay is not active. You don't want to keep a repair bay active when you're not using it because it uses a lot of power. Uh, but what we would have to do is, depending upon what it is we're trying to repair, it'll tell us you need you know 30 iron ingots and 20 copper ingots and 15 silicon or whatever it tells you. You have to feed it into here, and then it'll actually just repair it for you. And, it, it, and depending upon, you know, how damaged the vessel is, will determine how long it'll take for it to repair. Uh, and then this kind of, this goes up to, like, a little observation uh, deck out on front here that you can walk out and look out over, like, the front of the ship here. All of the weapons on our vessel are retractable. So if we turn them off, hopefully there's no enemies coming in, then everything will retract and go inside. And then we've got a nice little sleek look to our vessel. And that is why it's called the black light and why I have the lights a, little, a bit oversaturated because it has this really cool, you know, black light effect when you're uh, in, in space or in a dark area. So pretty cool. So guys, this is just a demonstration of what you can build in this game. Um, this vessel took me months, many months to build, but I, you know, I didn't work on it all of the time though either. I only worked on it when I had time to work on it, but for me, it took several months uh, to build. So, um, you know, if you're going to make something that's, that's pretty cool, um, you're going to need to spend some time. Um, on you know on it you're gonna need to spend some time you're gonna need to learn um, you know how to work with the blocks and and just you know start building stuff and the more you do it the better you get like anything else in life right um, but if you don't feel like spending you know this much time and effort on a ship like this then you can find ships like this and this actual ship if you want to on the workshop because uh, other people uh, have built it and, you know uh, other people have built capital vessels that are even bigger and grander than this one, too. Um, I, I, I consider myself a, a decent builder, uh, but I'm not I'm not the, the pro of the pros like, you know, Jeff Randall uh, would be, for example. 
Um, so, yeah, just there's all kinds of cool stuff that you can, if you decide to do it yourself, you can do it yourself. Or if you decide to use somebody else's, it's available to you in the workshop. So really fun. Okay, we are almost done here. But we need to travel to some other star systems to end, to end things up on our series. So that was kind of nice that we took out that damn Corvette. It sure certainly deserved it, too. Um, I've been harassed by that ship and you know in <laughs> on the multiplayer server and also on my let's play too. Uh, on my let's play it was actually a destroyer but it's basically the same idea um, you know Corvette destroyer whatever. Uh, it's pain in the ass and very dangerous until you get to the point where you can bring Big Brother up into space like we did and then just take it out. Uh, all right if you're interested by the way these are the uh, the stats of the capital vessel. So we've got very good performance um, on this vessel. And I don't think we, have, we only have one RCS on the whole ship. Um, so, so yeah, it performs really well for, for a capital vessel. Okay, so let's get the hell out of this system and go visit another star system. So how do we do that? Well, we press the M key and we go to the um, to the system map. And here we can select another lo location if we want to. So we've got uh, Kai's moon and Lee's moon. Um, and so if we want to go uh, to Kai, for example, uh, we just click on it to select it. And then we click lock target. And now uh, if we look somewhere on our HUD, we're going to find uh, a darker yellow arrow. And that's our, our lock on. So we just need to get our crosshair within that target. And you can't warp with your shields on. Okay. So what you have to do is you have to turn your shields off first before you can warp. And then you just get the ship up to speed and you press K. And there you go. This warp effect that you see here is actually new. They just added that. Um, in Alpha 12.3, right before they release, actually release the game. It's very cool. All right, and we are now, uh, we're, we're actually still in the same star system, but we're, we're at a different uh, planet. So um, this brought us into a gas giant, which is, where the hell is it at? Let's see if we can find it. Here, let's go here. There it is. It's right above us. Uh, so yeah, we are now at a massive gas giant. Now you can't land on a gas giant, of course, um, because if you did, the gravity would crush you. Uh, but if the gas giant has a moon or multiple moons, um, you can go, you know, to their moons. So this one does happen to have a moon, and, and this particular one is a barren moon. So it's going to look very similar to the to the moon that we saw um, on uh, in our in our uh, system. Okay in our planetary system. So that's really all you got to do. You just have to make sure you have enough fuel in your warp tank, and then you select your destination, and you make sure your shield is off, you lock the target in, get up to speed, press the K key, and you're off uh, to the stars. So that's how you warp between planets in the same system. Now, if you want to go galactic here, uh, then you hit the galaxy map, and it's the same idea, but now what we're doing in this case is we're warping uh, to different stars. And so, you know, as long as the star that you want to get to is is within range of your, you know, your fuel capacity, um, you can warp to those stars. So let's um, let's try this. This looks like either a white or a blue star. So let's select that. And if we want information about the system before we go to it, we can click. Uh, oh no, I guess that's for searching the system. So here, if we click on the star and then we do info panel, uh, this will give us some basic information about this system. So this is a white star. It's a type A star. Uh, talks about the surface temperature and the mass and radius and all that. And that doesn't t t really matter to us in the game because you can't, you know, you can't actually interact with the star itself. Uh, but it does tell us that this is a type A main sequence star. Uh, and, you know, just kind of gives you some astronomical information, which is really cool. Uh, and then this this is, you know, like your system information, but because we haven't gone there yet, we don't know about the place yet. So we have to first go there. Okay. So let's get back into our galactic menu and uh, we're going to select Grigu Gamma. We're going to lock target 
And this is going to be 7.8 light years away, which is not a problem at all for us. We have uh, lots of uh, lots of range. And so let's find the the star. There it is. And our shields are off. We'll get up to speed. And here we go. We are now warping to another star system. We're leaving our starter star system and warping to the first of thousands of these that we could potentially go to if we wanted to. When you warp to a new system, the first thing you should do is immediately put your shields on because you could be potentially warping into a dangerous situation. And we are also very, it basically warps you in almost to the sun. I mean, we're very close to the sun. We're, we're basically 0.4 astronomical units away from the sun, um, which is very close. The funny thing about the vanilla game is if you look at the space temperature, it's still minus 171. It should be like, you know, probably a thousand, thousands of degrees hot here. But, you know, uh, and remember that does work that way in Project Eden. The closer you are to the sun, the hotter it gets. But in the vanilla game, it, space is just cold no matter what. Okay, so now we're going to do a little bit of a squirt here and, um, you know, just kind of see if there's anything interesting in this system. And let's go open our map here. It looks like this is a kind of an empty system. There's not really a whole lot here, is there? Let's zoom out a little bit more. Let's see here. Let's go back to our galactic map. Um, this looks like a red dwarf star. It's a it's a type M dwarf star. Let's go check that out. So we'll lock the target there. Yeah, the the warp indicator is a, kind of a darker, almost an orange color, as opposed to the yellow color of the um uh, the waypoints. Okay, here we go. Oh right, I turn the shield off first. There we go. All right, let's get our shield on. Um, and then let's do a squirt. Let's see if anything comes up. Still nothing. Wow. Okay. Jaul. Oh my goodness. Okay, so that's the actual star there. This is a this must be a gas giant. It's really close to the sun. My goodness. Um so Okay, here we go. Yeah, we got some stuff here. Was I in the wrong map in that other system? Maybe I maybe I was just in the wrong map. Oh, uh, I bet you that's what it was. So they're probably um are some planets at that other system um all right so yeah we've got we've got this guy here and if we go to info panel this is dardo dardo uh, dardo one there we go dardo two planet so this is a snow planet it's a large planet um and it's undiscovered which is kind of cool so yeah, we could go we could go to the snow planet if we wanted to. Uh, let's get back into this menu again. Yeah, I'll bet you there were planets at that other place. I was just in the wrong menu. So, uh, but since we're here, see Dardo One. That's a high gravity hostile lava planet. Um, <coughs> so it is telling me that this is a a desert planet. So think Dune, right? Uh, this is a barren planet. Barren planets can be a good place to go for for high level resources because look, it's got um, uh, Arrestrum and Zascosium there, which are the two highest level ores. Um, now, one thing I do want to tell you about when it comes to high gravity planets. Notice it says the warning down there. You want to be really careful with high gravity planets. This planet has 4.02 gravity, which so it's basically four times the gravity of Earth. And so you want to make sure that your vessel has enough lift to be able to get back off said planet um, if you decide to go to it. Because if it doesn't, you're going to be stuck there forever. Um, so 
Uh, lava planets will often have very high gravity, and sometimes barren planets will too. Uh, barren planets can be extremely dangerous too because there's a lot of anti-aircraft turrets with some high-level nasty missiles that can wreck your day. So, yeah, lots of danger there too. So, uh, yeah, just pay attention to the gravity. Now, if you go into, um, let's see, let's go into our statistics here. All right, guys, um, I'm actually back for a minute. I, I looked up the, the formula for the, for the gravity. Um, it's actually quite simple. So basically, if you want a super, super easy, easy rule of thumb, you basically need about a 10 um, meters squared of thrust per 1G of gravity, okay? So if we look at um, our ship here, we've, if, we just, if we just go on vertical th lift alone and nothing else, we've got 38 um, meters per second squared of lift. So we could vertically lift off from a planet um, that has about 3.7 gravity, maybe th maybe 3.8. 3.8 is the maximum limit. If it's any more than that, then we don't have enough vertical thrust to lift off that planet. But we, we also have 62 meters per second of rear thrust. So even though we couldn't vertically lift off from it, we could still, excuse me, we could still lift off, you know, using our rear thrust. So let's test that theory by actually going to uh, this lava planet. So we're gonna lock target. Let's get our shields turned off. And uh, we should be able to lift back off this planet with our rear thrusters, but we should not be able to lift off of it with our uh, our vertical lift based you know based upon that formula. So this is 4.2 G's. So we we're, we're just a little bit under the gravity requirements for a vertical lift, but we still should be able to get off the planet with our our main drive thrusters, okay? But we're gonna test that theory and make sure. And if I'm wrong, then we'll be stuck here for, for all eternity. Um, now, I want the other reason I brought you back though is I also want to talk about uh, something else that you need to take into account when you go to a high gravity planet. And that's whether or not you yourself can actually get around because it does impact your own movement. So if you're on a high gravity planet, <coughs> um, it's going to affect, you know, your, your jet pack. And I've even seen it to where I've been on such high gravity planets in this game to where I couldn't even walk up the gangway to get back on the ship. I mean, it was that bad. Um, so, you know, if you, if you see a planet that's, you know, over four G's, you better think twice before, you know, you go, you leave your ship and start walking around because you might not be able to get back on your ship. Um, I'm not sure exactly how much four G's is going to affect us, but we're, we'll test that out uh, while we're here too on this planet and see, you know, see what it actually does to us. I just remember we were on, um, the multiplayer server a couple months ago and we had landed on a, a high gravity planet and I had a hell of a time getting back on the ship. I couldn't even, you know, walk up the, up the ramp to get on it. It was that, that heavy. Um, you know, and it'll wear you out faster. You won't be able to jump as high if, if at all. And, uh, so it does have an impact in that regard too, uh, which, you know, of course makes sense. Okay. Let's put our inertials on. And as soon as we break atmosphere, um, we should, the, the gravity should pull us down. We should not be able to stay um, up uh, afloat in the air. Okay, so let's just kind of gently enter the Atmo here. Okay, so yeah, see we are falling. So our vertical thrusters cannot hold us up. Uh, with the gravity on this planet. They don't have enough oomph to them to do that. But before we get all the way down, we still should be able to get back out this way, which we can. See our, our, our altimeter? So we have plenty of, of rear thrust to get off this planet. We just can't vertically use vertical lift to get off of it in this particular ship. So we are slowly, you know, slowly being pulled towards the surface of this planet. So let's go ahead and, and land. 
These places are very hostile, as you can imagine, of course. Um, so the environment's hostile. Oh, look. <laughs> Our guns are shooting at uh, alien troops, probably Xerax troops, uh, down at the bottom there. Uh, so, yeah, Im we're immediately greeted with nasties here. Uh, let's kind of scooch over here a little bit. And uh, we'll land. Whoa, that was a hard landing. I'd like to kind of get a little bit more level if we could. Nope, nope, nope. Press the O key. Alright. <clears throat> we can go with that. Okay, so here's the thing. Um, <clears throat> We are... Let's, let's change our view and let's hop out of the seat and just see... Okay, so we can jump a little bit. We can jump a little bit. Can we get back up these stairs once we get down them? Oh, you know what? Actually, we're I think we're being affected by our, our ship's gravity generator. I think. So we might not actually feel the planet's gravity until we get outside. Maybe? Our food sure is going down fast. Uh, let's go to food output and chow down on a couple of rations to get that taken care of no you know what I think I think we are being affected by this planet's gravity because see how quickly it's you know pulling us back down again so let's go down here so this is going to kind of be the acid test here once we get go out of here, can we come back up the ramp or not? Let's go halfway down. Oh, yeah, we can do it. We can hop back up. Okay. <clears throat> so, yeah. I mean, normally, you know, with my my jetpack, I'd be able to to jump, you know, a few meters up, but that's all the higher I can jump and see how quickly it pulls me back down. Um, so, you know, this is a 4G planet, and it's very significant, but there's even higher gravity planets than this, and if you get on those higher gravity planets, you could, you could be in a world of hurt if you can't, you know, walk back up the, the ramp there. All right, just kind of looking around to see if there's any enemies nearby we could greet with our rocket launcher. Uh, see, the temperature is 105 degrees Fahrenheit right now. Um, our suit will protect us up to 127.4, and that's that's without any thermal boost at all. Uh, so, if I was actually planning on getting out and doing a bunch of adventuring, I, I would have taken the EVA boost off too because it's you know we're losing a lot of armor. Uh, this is just a a pentaxid. Um, resource that you can pick uh, on the ground if you need to. Yeah. Well, we had a little squad of troops that was back off that way, but uh, I'm not seeing them now. See, let's go down here and see if we can get back up the bank here. So we're just, so if we just walk without using our jump jet, we can't go really, well, we can sort of kind of get up this way a little bit, but it's very slow going. So if we were on a planet with a, with a little bit more gravity than this, we probably wouldn't be able to make it up that hill. So anyway, I just wanted to show that to you and make sure that you take that into account uh, if you do decide to, you know, come to a high gravity planet. So again, the very basic rule of thumb is um, you need 10 uh, meters squared acceleration per 1g of gravity. Okay. Um, specifically, it's 9.8 if you want to be very specific. But okay, let's get back up on our ramp. Ugh. 
yeah, if we didn't have our jetpack on, we'd, we would not be able to walk up this ramp, but so fortunately we do. Let's take a score to O2 here. And then we're just going to hop into this cockpit here. And we're going to uh, point our nose up. Okay, so let's... Yeah, we got to kind of get our nose up so that we can get our rear thrusters underneath us in order to lift off. But, you know, as long as we can get our rear thrusters underneath us, we're fine. And then we'll be able to leave the, this planet. This place sucks, too. Lava planets are not pleasant places. So I'm just going to throw that out there. I know that surprises you guys, but they're not. They're not very pleasant. Okay, so we escaped the gravity of that planet. Just pay really close attention to that, though, because you could get yourself into a world of hurt. Uh, and that has, in fact, happened to me before. Um, I wonder what the gravity is on these moons here. Yeah, moons usually don't have high gravity because they're a lot smaller um, bodies. So we got a barren planet and we got a desert. We have quite a bit of variety on this planet. How about we go to the desert planet and then we'll then we'll wrap it up there. I mean, I've already actually wrapped up the series, but I did I wanted to come back and show you guys uh, the the gravity thing cuz that's actually really important to uh you know to know, all right? Okay, so let's go ahead and warp here. It's kind of funny, too, because, you know, I'm in that cockpit down in the mid-bay that's off to the uh, the starboard side a little bit. And so it also offsets the the crosshairs, too, on the ship, see? <laughs> so, desert planets. Desert planets, as you can imagine, can be warm, but not like a lava planet warm. Uh, but they can still be pretty hot. And, you know, some desert planets, well, there's actually a desert planet and then there's an arid planet. And the desert planet's going to be actual, you know, desert and may not have any water on it at all. Um, and so there's going to be a lot of sand dunes and a lot of dry mountains and that sort of thing. <coughs> Whereas an arid planet is more like, you know, going to be <coughs> African savanna type of, you know, environment. <coughs> Sorry, my voice is getting all squeaky here. Let's go ahead and drift in so we're not wasting a lot of fuel here. And uh, you can find desert columns. You can find those arachnid things, uh, just like on the snow planet for XP. Uh, desert planets typically will have neodymium on them. Uh, maybe some sathium. Sathium, well, sathium used to be more prevalent on snow planets. I don't know if they, if it still is or not. Um, I haven't really investigated that, but usually you can find neodymium on on the desert planets. And remember to always, you know, check the, uh, check for the asteroids in, you know, in orbits too. <laughs> okay. Well, this, this one kind of has a bit of a, of a rose type of hue to it, which is kind of neat. Pretty barren, though. Pretty barren place. Um, so, yeah, let's see. What do we have here? We've got cobalt, copper, titanium, 11 neodymium. Yeah, so, yeah, desert planets and arid planets are are pretty... Well, not so much arid planets, but desert planets are, are usually pretty good for neodymium. But there's a lot of neodymium deposits on this planet. I'm not seeing anything that looks like a body of water, though, so that would that'd be a thing. And remember, you need water to uh, to generate oxygen. About the only thing you'd be able to do on this planet is there's some little crater things, but there's probably not water in those. There could be. I don't know. There usually isn't, though. Um, you can still, you know, set up your your condenser thingamadoodle. Um, so. Uh, this guy here, 
and put some fuel in it and then it'll generate like the small bottles of water in the portable O2 for you. But that really would be your only option if you actually lived on, you know, the desert planet. Um, so, you know, if, if, you, if you set up a base here, you would need to be able to go to a different planet in the system, like the snow planet, for example, and maybe set up a bunch of water generators uh, on that planet to, and then, you know, just truck your water into the, to the desert planet. So what we're going to do is we're going to go to, um, let's go ahead and go to the snow planet. So we're going to just lock uh, the target there. And you know the drill by now. We just need to make sure that our, let's get turned around, get lined up, turn our shield off. What is the key for that? Let's actually look at that. X key. Okay. Uh, which is kind of in a bad spot. I should probably remap that because the X key is very close to my S key, which is my down key, and that's when you can sometimes accidentally hit that and turn it off when you didn't mean to. So I'm going to hit X, and that should turn the shields off, which it does. And let's go say hello to Dardo. All right, here we are at Dardo. Put our shields back on. I guess we can just press the X key to do that. Um, so yeah, let's do a squirt, see what's going on around the area here. Um, if we go to the M key and look here, we can see that we have, ooh, this has a Zascosium asteroid somewhere. That's, that's the most valuable ore in the game. And so knowing that if I was actually going to hang out here for a while, I'd, I'd actually go investigate all these. Um, asteroids and find out which one of those is the Zascosium and then mine the heck out of that thing. That's really cool. Um, but yeah, snow planets. Snow planets are pretty neat. Um, they can be very cold, of course, as you can imagine. And uh, I actually started my Alpha 12, Alpha 12 playthrough uh, on the hardest settings on the snow planet, and it was a brutal start. Boy, oh boy, was it cold. Took us a while to... Um, you know, to get our feet under us, but we eventually did. That's a Neo asteroid right there. Cool. So let's go check this planet out, and then we will probably go ahead and end our tutorial series on the snow planet, because why not? Why not? One thing about the lights uh, on a big ship like this is if you're zoomed out too far, you can't really see them. So you have to kind of get, you know, get in more. We are drifting too. I turned my inertials off to save fuel, especially on this ship. This ship is very expensive to fly, you guys. It's definitely an in-game ship when you've got lots of resources. All right. So snow planets have, you typically have, you know, pretty rugged mountains, but then they also have like, you know, forested areas and tundras. Um, you can find snow golems, which are good to farm in the early to mid game and can have really high level ores. They don't really have a lot of them, but they do have some. And um, it is, so it's 10 degrees outside right now. So uh, not, Super cold. I mean, cold enough, of course, but not super cold. And we have an EVA boost, our EVA boost on anyway, so the, we're pretty impervious to the cold itself. And, you know, like, this is true for any of the planets. The higher up you go, the colder it's going to be, too. So um, the top of the mountain is going to be a lot colder than down here in the valley, uh, which, of course, makes sense. Let's turn off our thrusters. and uh, just go outside and take a quick look around. Welcome to Hoth. <laughs> so yeah, this is a, your typical snow planet. And uh, it's 28 degrees here, so relatively warm for, you know, being a snow planet. 
Uh, you'll also find a lot of the, um, you know, the arachnid cross between an ant and a scorpion and a mantis monsters on here. Really, really good to farm for XP. Because uh, you get a shit ton of XP for killing them. And they're not as hard to kill as they should be for the XP that they give you. So I'm just trying to see if we might <clears throat> spot one of those around here at all. Nope, don't see it. All right, well, guys, I think we are finished with our tutorial series. I don't know what episode this is going to be, but it's going to be up into the 40s, I think. I never, ever thought it would take <laughs> this many episodes to do this tutorial series. But you know what? It was a lot of fun. And based upon the feedback that I've gotten from you guys, um, it sounds like it's it's really you know helped a lot of you learn how to play the game, uh, learn the basics of the game, and, and really get into it. And that's just uh, you know very gratifying to me to hear that. Uh, particularly when you know some of you have sent me comments and said you know I'm, I went out and bought the game after watching the tutorial series, which is great because this is a good game. This is an underrated game, you guys. More people need to know about this game, and they need to know what you can do in it. Um, some people, you know. Some people get the game, or they see somebody play it, and they they say, uh, you know, that's too complicated. I don't want to, you know, it's too hard to figure out. But it's like anything else, you know. If you take the time to learn how to play it, then, then the, you know, then it'll be rewarding. And you'll just enjoy the heck out of it. At least I do. Uh, and that's probably pretty obvious. But uh, anyway... I really appreciate everybody's support uh, watching this series. Um, this was my first tutorial series too, by the way, that, that I've really ever done. I, I've done like a couple of one-off tutorials before, but never a big series like this. And um, it's just been a really good experience for me too, you know, and I even learned learned a few things. So I learned some things, uh, you know, that I just discovered along the way myself. And I learned, oh, there's the, that's what I was looking for down there, those guys. Um, I learned some things from you guys in the comments because we have other experienced players that have watched and had some really good input. And, um, yeah, it's just been really fun. So I am not uh, done with Imperion itself. Um, I do uh, I do have an ongoing Let's Play series, and I pretty much almost always have a Let's Play series going on for Imperion. I do sometimes take breaks for a while, but uh, we do have an active Let's Play series going on right now. And I'm, I'm about into... I'm about into mid-game or so in that Let's Play series, so if you're interested in continuing uh, hanging out with me in this wonderful space game, stop by and uh, check out the Let's Play series. It's on the channel, and you know I got the playlist and everything, and you can find it right on the channel. Other than that, guys, really appreciate everybody, um, again, for the support. Hope you really enjoyed this, and I hope you find it very useful, even though it was extremely detailed, but I intended for it to be, and so, you know, that's uh, that's what it is. And I'm going to let you go here. You guys take care. And hopefully we'll see you out in space some, somewhere, sometime, somehow. <laughs> oh, that was dumb. All right. Bye, guys.